Hey guys, uh, Coda Guy here. Just want to warn you ahead of time, this this tutorial does include a lot more advanced Coda use cases. So if you are new to Coda or just beginning, uh, this video may not be for you. But what I'm going to try to do here is show you how to, with Coda and Coda's building blocks alone, using no code whatsoever, keep essentially an ever-running list of your emails with different contacts and also decreasing row count at the same time. Uh, the solution I'm gonna show you is really flexible and I've used it in so many different use cases. So if you don't have this exact use case, I think you'll find a lot of things in this video that are of value to you and will really level up your code deck. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, this is our end product, essentially what we're gonna try to build here. You're gonna have a list of contacts, a list of those contacts emails, and then here in this yellow field is what we're gonna try to construct, which is gonna be automatically updating data that's keeping track of how many times you have had contact with this person. This concept could extend to um, the Gmail pack, it could extend to many other packs, but today we're gonna be using the Google um, Google Calendar pack. So we're going to be replicating meetings that we had with these individuals and all these fields here, how many meetings they've done, the latest meeting you've done, and then this one's actually going to be earliest meeting. So this is the end product. Um, I obviously just input these in manually, but I'm going to show you how to do this automatically. And all these are going to update. These numbers are going to update automatically as well without increasing your row count. And that's a very important idea within this concept because the more rows you have in your doc, the slower it's going to go. So we want to know how can we keep track of all these numbers and some other metadata like this, but without increasing row count. So here we go. First, let's delete this. That's what I manually input in. And let's go over to a calendar integration. So I, or uh, what you would do if you were to replicate this exactly is go to insert and you go to packs, you go to Google calendar and you pull in the events table um, in order just for privacy. So I'm not pulling in actual people's email. I've replicated what that table will look like. So this table is obviously fake. It is not from my real calendar. Um, it's obviously got a lot of Star Wars information, but this is what your events table would look like. So I'm going to pretend that this is the Google Calendar pack, um, and you should be able to follow this tutorial exactly and get the same output. So first, what we have in here is the event name, random event one, two, three, four. We've got start and end. That's when the meeting or the calendar event started and ended. And then we have a list of attendees as chips. We call these coded chips. They're objects and inside of them there is different information. So we're going to create and add a couple columns to our Google Calendar pack. And the first is going to be a list of just their emails. Right now that looks like an email, which it is, but this is actually an object chip. I just want the email. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say um, formula and I'm going to say attendees.email. That's it. So that's going to pull out just their email address. And now I'm going to call this all emails. I don't know why it went in all caps. All right, next up, we are going to want to take for this Grogu one, we want to essentially update the Grogu row. So over here, there is a, a, a Grogu row, right? We're matching by email. So that is the target row. I'm going to call that the target row that we want to update. So we're going to use another column and call it target row. We are going to define a formula here. Uh, fast way to get this, kind of a cheat for you, is to highlight the whole row and press the equal button on your keyboard. Pops up the formula row right away. So what we're going to do now is we are going to say DB contacts. That's the name of my other table. Dot filter. So I say go look into the DB contacts page and find certain rows. I want you to find the one where email is in all emails. Right, so that in keyword is working with lists. So it's just saying, hey, go find out where the, the email is in a list of emails, which is this column. And that's going to pull, you'll see this pulls the actual rows themselves from there. So that's the target row that I want to update because I essentially want to log like, hey, this was an email contact um, or this was a calendar event with baby Grogu. I want to log that. I want to record that inside of my contacts table to keep track. So now we have our target row and that's super important. So next what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a button called uh, scrape and push. So essentially what it's doing is scraping this data from this table and pushing it into our contacts table 
um, into this meeting digest. So where we're gonna push all the information is not actually in here, but we're gonna keep all of the information of their emails in something called meeting digest. This is a really important column in blue. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here and then I'll explain it afterwards. But I'm gonna create a button and then we're gonna open its formula. We're not gonna select an action here, we're gonna define a formula. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's open this up a bit more. We're gonna say target row. Notice that's a list, that chip right there says, hey, target row, which you're referencing, is a list of rows. I'm gonna do formula map on it. Formula map is a way to iterate over a list. Um, I've got some help documentation I'll put at the end of this video if you want it. Um, but, so formula map. I want to run an action on each one of those things. And what I want to do is I essentially want to add a small row of text that will digest this calendar invite and keep its information in there. So I'm gonna use format and we're gonna say one comma two comma three. All right, so I'm saying format one, two, three. I want some individual pieces of information in there and the information that I'm gonna keep, you could keep whatever you want, is going to be the event name um, and then it's gonna be what else do we want? Probably the start date. I just want it to date. I don't want the whole time on it. I just want the date. And then I'm gonna take the duration of the meeting as well because why not? So I haven't created a duration column yet. So I'm gonna just put a e uh, space there. I always do that so it doesn't break my formula. And we're gonna create a column called duration. And that's simply going to be end minus start. Uh, dates are held as number values in Coda, so we can just subtract and multiply them and I'll get 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, 15 minutes, right? You'll see three hours. That was a long meeting. Um, I'm going to change this as well to a duration type. All right, so now I'm going to go input that back into my formula. Open that up, open it larger. So now I'm going to erase what I put and we're going to put that as duration. All right. Um, if you want to be able to see this too, like what is this gonna actually look like inside my formula? Here's a trick that I do, I copy it. And then I'm gonna go to a new column that I'm just gonna keep for just a second. I'm gonna open it up with the equal sign and push that in. All right, so there's my output. This is what my output will look like. I'm gonna extend it just to be able to see it. So you'll see that I have uh, the event name I've got the date and then I have the duration. All right, so I've got basically a summarized or a digested version of this output. So what I'm gonna say is, we'll actually keep this here. This will make writing our formula easier. Um, we'll keep that there. So what we're gonna now say is target row dot formula map. And now we're gonna say what we actually want to do to each one of those target rows is modify a row. Modify rows, uh, current value that references within the loop that we're looping over the current row. I want to, what row, to what column do I want to edit? Uh, meeting digest. And then I want to input what the output will look like. All right, so we're not done, but we're just gonna test this out to see what happens. Um, here we go, so let's try it with these two guys. Shaboom. Two rows modified. Let's go back. It should be Obi and Darth Vader. There we go. You'll see that Darth Vader and Obi now have uh, something logged within their meeting digest that is showing um, that meeting. But we need to format this in a way that is easily readable and that we can easily parse through with formulas later to draw rich data out of it. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to store it as a CSV style. So what we want is not just a ever loving long string, but what we'd want to end up with is something that looks like this. There's a line break and then each line break defines a specific um, calendar event and we're gonna keep this running for a long time so let's go back we don't want that yet uh, there's one more thing we want to do to here though two more things actually uh, within here this is a single cell you can even open up a cell with this 
This cell I've tested can hold around 14,000 characters, but only if all those characters are text and strings themselves. Uh, if you add in like dates and other rich formatting, it can hold less. So we're gonna do a couple things. Number one, we're gonna actually take the output we'll look like. Um, whoops. And we are gonna open up its formula and transform the whole thing to text. Okay. So now we're just pushing text in there, no duration values, no date values. Next step, what we want to do is we essentially want to modify it differently. If it's the very first time you're inputting it, you don't wanna add a line break. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna say, if current value dot meeting digest dot is blank, then all I wanna do is modify rows. Um, Row is current value, meeting digest, and then output will look like. But if it's not blank, if there's already rows in there, what we want to do is to concatenate, say smush together some, some information. We're going to smush together some information. The information we want to smush together is going to be uh, what is currently in there already. So meeting digest, uh, current value, dot meeting digest, and then after whatever's in there, whether it's one row, two rows, or three rows, we're going to put a line break. And then after that, we are going to put um, output will look like. And then that's it. We're essentially saying, hey, take whatever's in there right now, give us a new line break, and then add the current output will look like. Um, so let's test that out. You can also auto format that to make it look a little nicer. And boom. So let's do it now. Um, let's click that. Let's click six of them and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Unable to execute invalid action. Interesting. Okay. So let's go into here and see what's happening. Target row. Um, do, 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 do. Concatenate current value dot meeting digest. Line break and output will look like. Hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go start testing things. So let's see if it worked. Um, it did. It didn't want to do it again. So that means that the first action is working, right? So I know it's the second action that's not working. So I'm going to go and debug um, right now. Oh, that's because that's my if statement. <laughs> uh, if current value is, I didn't add any modify rows here. Modify rows. There we go. And at the end of concatenate, let's try that. All right. We'll see what happens. Um, it's giving me an error. So we'll read that real fast. Modify rows expects parameters to be a table. Oh, yep. Because I didn't tell it what rows to modify. Uh, current value. And then we're going to go um, meet and digest. All right. That should hopefully not be an invalid action now. So let's try it again. six we'll keep going we'll do a couple more just for the funsies of it all right so there we go um now you'll see that it's starting to log the different information as rows which is super awesome so now we're going to hold essentially a long long list of events that they've ever had right so i can see that darth vader i've held three calendar events with him so far uh one that was 30 minutes one that was 30 and one that was three hours with Luke, I've held three as well. And with Boba, I've only held one. So this essentially will be hidden in the background, but it's gonna hold a long running string of data or events that we can actually parse and digest with our code of formulas. So we're gonna do a couple more things. Uh, we don't ever want to, as you see here, I push this event twice, right? I don't wanna push this event twice. I only want it once. So I'm gonna put in a safeguard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a um, I'm just going to call it already added and then I'm going to say the other action that I want this to run. So I want it to also modify. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to command all command all command copy. And I do this a lot of times actually, um, where I write parts of the formula, command all command copy, and then redo it again. So I'm essentially going to say run action. So I want this button to do multiple things. First, I want it to do that whole action. And then next, I want it to modify rows. This row already added. 
I'm just going to say yes. Right? So let's see. Great. It added, it modified this row and added a row to contacts. Yes. So now we're going to disable this button. So don't press again if I've already pressed it. And we're just going to say if already added. Um, that just defaults to knowing that it's already added. You don't even have to do is not blank. You can just say already added. It's defaulting to yes. So that will not be pushed again. So that's what we want. So now let's kind of reset our document and try this again. Uh, we're going to go to contacts already added. Yep. Contacts. We're going to erase these pieces. And now we're going to try to push all these buttons at once and see what happens and see if it updates for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say slash push buttons. And then I'm going to call this one scrape and push. Let's give it a moment. You'll notice that it's starting to disable all those. Look at it go. Look at it go. It's racing. Okay. So we're going to see this. It's updating with all of their events. This is amazing. All right. So what I'm going to do now that I have all their events is first I'm going to unwrap this text because I don't want to see it. Um, now I'm going to we're going to populate our yellow fields. So what I am going to do is make this a button that's going to do that for us. We could populate these via formula. Watch. We can go meeting digest dot split. So make this meeting digest into a list. Um, if you're not sure what split does, I have some more help documentation that you can get. I'll put it at the comments in this video as well. But I'm going to split it at the line break and then I'm just going to count it. Right. So now I know how many Google Calendar um, events that I've had with this individual. But eventually, if this is a really long list and if these get into the thousands, this is going to really slow your doc down. So I'm going to show you how to do it without formulas in a way that does not slow your doc down. Um, edit formula. So we don't want a formula there. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say this is going to be a button. And what it's going to do is it's going to do a lot of stuff. So we want to open its formula. I don't want to use one of these random ones. I want to um, edit its formula. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say run actions because I want it to do multiple things. The first thing I want it to do is modify rows, this row, meeting count, and I'm going to put that same formula that I put before. What do I want to input to meeting count? I want to input um, doobly doobly doop, doop, doobly doobly doop, uh, meeting digest dot split at the line break dot count. All right. Now I'm just going to test that. Booms. Input 26. There you go. So it's working, but I wanted to input all at the same time. So now what I'm going to do is go into here and I'm going to open this up. So now I want to do latest email is what I'm looking for. So now I want to modify rows again. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. Silly me. I can do it all within this modify row. Um, now I want to do latest meeting when it came up latest and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do meeting digest, right? Cause we're getting that from that information dot split at the line break. Okay. So now we have it, um, in a list. If there's 26 line breaks then there's 26 calendar events, it's recognizing. Now I'm going to split that again. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to formula map on it because now I want to split each item in that list at the um, comma. Comma is what we chose to separate the values. And then, bum, 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 we got a split on that. Split current value. I want to take the current value in the list and split it on the comma. And then after that, I want the second value within it. Unth. Two. That's just saying, give me the second value within that list. And then I'm going to change it to a date. Goodness gracious. These get crazy. So we're going to see if this works. Nope. It didn't. Right. Um, so let's undo. Ooh, that's because I tried to give it the entire list. Um, I don't want all of them. I just want the latest one or the biggest one, which will be dot max. Oh, shucks a do. All right. This is normal encoder, right? It's like debugging a lot of pieces. So let's activate this. Uh, dot to date dot. Ooh, I want it outside of that row because now I'm activating on the list. Boom. There we go. That's pulling out the latest meeting date from each row. 
fantastic. Now we also want the earliest meeting, okay, the earliest time I've met with them. So we're gonna do the same thing in here, but we're gonna say um, inside this row, we're gonna do another row and that row is gonna be earliest meeting. And I'm gonna do this same thing again. But instead of max, I want min. All right, let's see if that works. There you go. Now it's taking the earliest meeting for each individual. All right, um, but is that the earliest meeting for each individual? I wanna double check that. Yeah, that is the earliest meeting for each individual. Why is it all 316? Oh, I know why, because I actually mimicked uh, from my pack. So yes, this is working correctly. We are doing well. All right, so that is auto updating. Great, wonderful. So now the last thing we need to do is we need to make sure you don't press this by yourself. Uh, but this is going by an automation. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to automations and you're going to say when um, every, maybe uh, we're going to call this push and scrape and scrape when. So this is maybe every day, um, every day, time-based day, every day. Let's do it in the middle of the night while you're asleep. 3 a.m. Push buttons. Push and scrape, scrape and push. Great, so that's on. So now that will automatically continue to update uh, your email list. And then the next thing you'd want is another one that is um, update count. So that's gonna be time-based every day. Let's do it at 4 a.m. Let's do it an hour later. And let's push buttons, not push and scrape, but update meetings. So now if we turn both of those on, that will continually push and scrape data from here. Um, lastly, so now we've got all of our automations in. We don't need this anymore. The last thing that we're gonna need to do is also set this. If this was a actual pack table, you would need to go to its options and you need to go to its sync options and choose to also sync every hour, right? So then over time, you're just gonna continually grow this list of contact information. We can hide this. And then you're good to go. You can hide this since this is automated. And there you go. All right, so that is how you kind of keep an updated list. Um, if you want this template, I'll put the template in the comments. If you want some help documentation about those formulas like formula map or split or with name or different things like that, I have a lot of documentation on that as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed and hit up the comments with questions. Adios.